Welcome into the Michigan State Hockey Hub. As this week we have another special guest, um, a new coach to the bench, Jared DeMichael. Jared, how are you doing? Doing well, Clay. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we are really excited to have you on, and and welcome to to Michigan State. I know that there's a lot of excitement around the program right now. Um, all new all new faces on the bench this year, and we will touch on that in a little bit. But before we get started, I just wanted to go ahead and dive right into your career. Um, I know you you played hockey, but if you could just kind of tell us about your playing career and, and coaching career up to this point. Yeah, for sure. So I uh, I grew up in the northwest corner of Connecticut in a, a small town called Harlington, Connecticut. Um, my parents met in the town right next door called Torrington, Connecticut, and um, got into, into hockey by watching the, the Hartford Whalers. Um, mm -hmm. a, uh, actually, a few former Spartans were on the Whalers back in the day. Like my biggest fan I was probably of was Jason Muzzati. Um, mm -hmm. Being a former goalie, followed him pretty closely, would watch his Vaughn pads and he'd switch up his straps and things like that. And he was always very respectful and kind to the fans. So, um, but that's kind of how I got into hockey. And then um, I played uh, junior hockey in the North American League and in the USHL, had a, a pit stop in the EJ as well too. And then um, after playing in the USHL for the Indiana Ice and the Chicago Steel, I was lucky enough to get a division one opportunity at RIT. Um, played there for four years. And then my, my senior year, we had a pretty strong season where we uh, made it all the way to the Frozen Four in Detroit in far Ford Field in the great state of Michigan and um, ended up losing out there to Wisconsin, um, which was an unreal way to kind of finish the four years of college. And then after that, um, I signed a minor league contract in the Washington Capitol system. So mainly played in, in Hershey in the American League and South Carolina in the East Coast League that first year. And then at the end of the year, my rights were traded to Elmira in the East Coast League. And then this is my second year of pro. I started with the Boston Bruins at their training camp and then uh, got sent down to the American League, East Coast League. And then I was on uh, two East Coast League teams within a few weeks. And then I thought I might need to look into something else. And my old RAT coaches, I reached out to them and talked to them about potentially getting into coaching. And um, a real, whatever, I really lucked out that right in the town right next to uh, RIT in, in Pittsburgh, New York. There's a new Division Three college named Nazareth College was starting a Division Three program. And the head coach there is George Roll who had recruited me a little bit when I was playing junior hockey. So we had a little bit of a prior relationship and uh, felt like it'd be a great place to start to, uh, to learn to recruit, to learn to coach from George and also the opportunity to get my master's. So if for some reason uh, I didn't think coaching was for me, I could um, just fall back on my master's and my education, yeah. but I, I was, I was addicted to it right away. And kind of the goal was after getting my master's to move on to division one and I was lucky enough that I got an opportunity at St. Lawrence with Greg Carvel. was with Greg for two years at St. Lawrence. And then the last uh, six years, I, I was at UMass in Amherst, Massachusetts, uh, a part of that program, um, building that program up. And now I've, uh, I've been at Michigan State here, I guess, for a few weeks. Yeah. And are, are you in Munn right now? I, I am in Munn. I, I feel like this would be a, a good place to, to, to do this this call. So I, yeah. I'm right in the middle of Munn right now. I can... I can see the, uh, the the people putting in some work here into the rink and into the facility, so it's it's awesome. That, that's you know you you need to get into podcasting because you've already got the transitions down. I was going to ask if there's any update on the uh, on the renovations, the the additions to Mun Ice Arena. Yeah, no. So like there there's like a there's a handful of, of gentlemen working on the ice right now. I can look across the way um, the the main entrance. There's a bunch of people working on that as well too. Um, I mean, I've, I've been in and out of, uh, of campus here the last few weeks. And every time I come back, like a lot of things have been getting done. So the, um, the, the renovation is amazing. Um, I mean, Munn is obviously a very special arena on its own. And then plus adding in uh, the renovations here, like we, we should have arguably one of the best facilities in college hockey. And I think these renovations are just as good, if not better than a lot of NHL arenas. Um, so yeah. obviously it's going to be on us to, to hit the road and to, to find some future Spartans that want to be a part of it. But the, the renovations um, are unreal. And I think Tom Anastas and, and his staff, Dan Cole and his staff, they put a lot of hard work um, and fruits of their labor. And we're lucky to in, in be able to enjoy what they put into it. And obviously we're going to be very respectful of all that work and all the money that was put into these renovations. Yeah. And, and I'm glad that, that you mentioned the previous staffs there, because regardless of the on ice production 
Um, there's nothing that that can be taken away from Dayton Cole's work to get Mon Ice Arena where it is today. And it's gonna it's it's gonna really pay the the dividends down the road, which is exactly what we're talking about next is the recruiting process. In the past, and you know, why I'm asking this question is fans see every football player tweeting constantly, here's who I have offers from, here's who I'm visiting, here's pictures of me here. It's it's very open. Hockey is a closed door. Um, it seems like you get on Twitter one day and it's, you know, some so-and-so who's 16 years old just committed. And you're like, wait up, I've never even heard of this guy. I never knew he, he was interested. So it's a much quieter process. So I understand, and just so the fans know, um, or, or anybody who's listening to this podcast, we cannot talk about anybody who is not signed at Michigan State. Um, so we're not asking for names. We're just kind of asking what, you know, what, walk us through what a recruiting process looks like. Yeah, no, I mean, um, obviously, Coach Nightingale, Coach Towns, and myself, like, we're going to be all over the U.S., Canada, um, Europe as well, too. Um, but a lot of times, obviously, we may be watching in person. Or we may be watching online. Um, Instat is a, is a program, a website that's gotten very, very popular here the last few years where you can go on there. You can watch full games all over the world, or you can just watch a player's shifts. So it's pretty handy where, say, I'm in the USHL watching a game in Muskegon versus Tri-City, and maybe there's a conflict or maybe we have a game and I can't watch that and whatever. Next weekend, I can just pull up a player's shifts of the games um, in Muskegon against another USHL team. So that stuff's convenient. But um, a lot of times it's evaluating with your eyes. Sometimes it's evaluating with your ears where you get a phone call from somebody that you trust. And then from there, we maybe we call the player, have some conversations, build that relationship. Um, something that I, I've learned through the years, and I know Coach Towns and Coach Nightingale feel the same way, is um, the character piece is, is something that we're not really to be, willing to budge on for, for us to, to get um, the, the program where I think everyone wants it to be is character is number one. Your, your willingness to, to do the hard things, to, to do things when, when nobody's looking to, to go that extra mile, those things are the things that we want, and also the honesty as well, too, in the player's character. And then, obviously, we want them to be very strong students and good players on the ice. Um, but we're, we're going to need that. Obviously, Big Ten is arguably the best conference in the country. So to be able to get those those players, those high characters, those high talent, those high-level students, those are kind of the things that we're looking for. So usually you have some conversations, some text message, some text messages maybe – Maybe you sauce the kids a follow on social media and things like that. Um, and then from there, obviously, with COVID, it was a little bit different. Like, there was as many visits going on, but now kids are able to come to campus. We do like to meet with the kids face-to-face. -face. That way we have comfort on our end and their end. Um, and it's basically a two-way street of, of finding the right fit for both sides, for, for the player and, and for our, our staff and for our program here at Michigan State. Um, I mean, obviously, college hockey recruiting is different than other sports where – you might commit a kid when he's 16 years old and he might not come to campus until he's 20 years old. So like your yeah. relationship with four years, like um, my, my previous program there at UMass, very, very proud of what we accomplished there, but there's a player coming in this year, built a relationship with him, committed him there when he was 16 years old, saw him when he was just a baby, didn't even have any facial hair. And now he's coming in this year as a 20 year old, um, but everybody has a different path. And I think we're going to operate the same way here at Michigan State where um, we want to get players when they're ready to come to college. So some guys are, are very special or in that elite percentage where they can come in as a true freshman. But that's kind of few and far between in college hockey. Most of the times kids are coming in 19, 20 years old. I, I went to college as a 21-year-old freshman. I had to age out in junior hockey. Um, so usually, obviously, if a, if a player is to commit here, um, we'll have an open, honest communication kind of about their timeline, and they're going to have to earn – the opportunity to come in and we're gonna have to earn their trust through after they they commit to us but um i know with coach nightingale and with coach towns like we we want to build that communication channel and obviously they're going to be a part of very strong midget programs high school prep school junior programs um and we want to be an asset to them but we also trust the, those coaches that are doing their work um and then when the time comes they'll, they'll get their nli to come in and then obviously when they come here, they're going to have to work extremely hard and, and be model citizens and model students and 
um, hopefully model, model students on the ice. But I, I think what we have to offer here facility-wise um, with Coach Nightingale and, and his background and just all, also his ability to, to relate to the modern hockey player, um, I, I think things have really changed where the, the head coach is not really – a dictator anymore like you want to have that communication and the kids today they want that um they, they 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 look for that they thrive on that just they're very visual learners communication in person social media text messages and i, I think our staff wants to have that communication and, and sometimes um you need some of that tough love that honesty but i think we also want that from our players giving it to, to us so um the recruiting process there's a it's basically a labyrinth but uh at the end of the day and it might sound cliche, but like we want to find the right kids, the right, right. people for, for our program. Um, and I, I think there's there's a, a championship level group of, of Spartans out there and it's our job to find them. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and we love to hear that about about bringing in the right players and the right character. And um, that at times can push so much further than talent. Um, you know, if it's the third period with two minutes left, sometimes that that character is the thing that wills you to victory as opposed to a 25 goal scorer. Um, as we move on and we're going to talk. So I didn't have this initially, but I jump on around two o'clock and I see because I, I, I heard that Mike Towns was going to be, you know, coming to Michigan State as well. But it wasn't official and it has now been made official. So we can talk about it. Um, Coach Mike Towns, what exactly will his title be or role? Um, is he just an assistant coach or is he a certain aspect of an assist, assistant coach? I, I mean, I, I believe he's the I believe he's the assistant coach. Um, I think him, him and I are going to hit the pavement here and hit the road a lot together. Um, again, I, I don't know whatever exact roles and things like that, but I know Mike from his background. He's done a very strong job with working with the forwards and the power play at both AIC and Clarkson. Um, I, again, I don't know what Coach Nightingale has set up for us this year. I think both Mike and I are very comfortable with working with all positions and all special teams, whatever kind of Coach Nightingale wants us to do, we're willing to do. But um, Mike, in, in my opinion, has did an unbelievable job of turning around, being a part of the, the staff that turned around the program at AIC. And then he's also done a very strong job at Clarkson. Um, I'm, I'm excited to work with Mike because I think he actually uh, will help me out a little bit recruiting wise. He's, he's got some very strong contacts out in Western Canada. Um, he does, he's done a good job all throughout Canada really. And, he, and he's tied into North America and, and in Europe. So hopefully um, Mike and I can work very hard together as like a, maybe a little bit of a tag team on the road. And yeah. then if we want to get uh a Survivor Series triple threat with Coach Nightingale on the road, we can do that too. Yeah, yeah, that that would be awesome to see all all three of you all out, out on a recruiting trip. That sounds pretty cool. But I'll, I'll say this: Co Coach Nightingale has worked extremely hard on the recruiting path, um, but also um, receiving a lot of phone calls, text messages. Um, like I, I give him a ton of credit. He's got um, a lot of hot hats to wear as a head coach, and he he wants to be involved and he wants to learn on the recruiting side and um it's it's been he's been very fun and passionate and driven to work with so far so I, i'm really really excited a quick question that just popped into my head about this as you know there's a new beast in college hockey called the transfer portal how do you manage that plus you know you you're out doing your normal trips bringing in younger players trying to get them to commit and you also have to monitor this ever-changing at any moment group of names that could pop up and immediately help your team, you know, in theory within the next month, if, if that makes sense. So how, how do you manage that? Um, what, what's kind of the process of managing the transfer portal? Yeah, I mean, for, I think for us, we just see it as a, another avenue for recruiting, just how there's different junior leagues and midget leagues and leagues in Europe, like this is just another recruiting avenue. So um, I think kind of similarly to in, in the normal recruiting method, like we, we have to um, maybe be constantly refreshing that transfer portal mm -hmm. and, and keeping our ears to the streets because a lot of stuff is on hearsay and sometimes a, a kid might pop in there that you might hear about um, and it's on us. And again, it's no different though with the transfer portal where you need to find the right kids. And I think a lot of times, maybe sometimes kids that hop in the transfer portal 
um, we want kids that are in there for the right reasons. Maybe they really want to be a Spartan or they are looking for a specific major. They really want to play for Coach Nightingale. Like th Those things, I think, are really valuable. If, it, if a kid's maybe going on the transfer portal just because he's disappointed about playing time yeah. or he's um, unhappy in his current situation because he doesn't like his coach or something like that. Like, obviously, there's a lot of situations that, that come up. Um, but I, I will say, too, with the transfer portal, like, isn't it isn't this perfect utopia that maybe social media makes it out to seem like um, I think the the minority of kids that go on there find a place to play yeah. and the majority don't find a place to play. So it, it is it is helpful where you can you can plug some holes and things like that. Um, I mean, in, in our philosophy, too, we're going to be very open minded to getting players from from all over the place. Um, but again, like we, we have to have a hole to fill and things like that. And I think it's kind of finding a happy meeting of, of both. Like obviously in college hockey, you look at the teams that win. They're usually a little bit older, um, but we wouldn't sacrifice a young high end talent just to get somebody right. that's 24, 25 years old. Like, again, it's it's a it's a juggling act. But um, I think we've got a very, very special staff here that I'm excited to work with. And I'm excited for us to kind of attack that challenge and go at it face first. Yeah. And part of recruiting is and we see this in all other sports as well. Everyone wants to just see a five star next to someone's name, right? But sometimes that five star doesn't fit into the program or the playing style. And what I wanted to try to get a grasp of, and you may not have this answer just yet, um, because you you said you've only been there for probably about 10 days or, or 14 days or so. Is that about right? Well, I mean, I think I've been hired for that long, but I don't, I don't think I've been on campus that long. I think I've, okay. been, so I think you, I've maybe only been on campus for like five days because there is actually – there's a lot of recruiting that's going on right now. Um, so we're, we're trying to, to be a part of that. Um, but obviously too, I, I've got my family back in Massachusetts. So whatever okay. there's, but I, again, all, all these things are, are things that are, are great opportunities and I, whatever new coming into the situation. So it, it, the, all those things are all good. Yeah. And with, with that being said, you haven't had a chance to identify every player's strength weakness on this roster, especially with, the roster turnover that's happened over the past few months, um, new players coming in, players leaving, you know, you can turn on a game from last year and maybe seven of the players are not on the team this year. So it's going to take a while for you to kind of get eyes on their playing style to fully answer this, um, to see which system pr probably matches what you have best. But um, is there any insight that you can give us on kind of the identity of how this team's going to play or their playing style, or there, is there going to be a lot of dump and chase and winning Battles on the board? Is it going to be um, a, a defensive focused team or? Yeah, no, I mean, I would say with from talking to Coach Nightingale, like we, we definitely like our identity. We want to be fast, hard, and smart. Um, those are kind of the three big pillars that we're that we want to coach and we want to recruit to. Um, and then our playing style, like we want to be fast, up tempo, puck possession team, um, hard working and, and honest, um, and. I think our, we obviously have to build the foundation this year, and I, I don't think we want to change our playing style from year one to, to year five. Um, I think when you set the foundation, you have to set the tone on that. And we, we may take some lumps early, um, but from my conversation, seeing some of the players here on campus, like I, I think they're eager. Um, and I know Coach Nightingale and our staff, like we're eager to play our style. And um, again, I said it earlier, like a, the Big Ten is an extremely competitive conference, and we're going to have our hands full. Um, but I think whatever, we, we want to be very sound in all three zones. We, I think we want to be creative in the offensive zone with puck possession and movement and guys hard along the walls and hard along the, uh, the net fronts and good checking details in neutral zone. We want to slow down the opponent and speed our team up and get right on top of teams. And in the defensive zone, I think we'd like to limit scoring chances, take away time and space, and limit our time in the D zone. Um, I mean – I don't think there's anybody that plays hockey to play in the D zone, but obviously you have to respect it and take care of it. And um, with me obviously being a former goalie, I, I'd like our goalies to be taken care of. But at the same time, too, um, you need get good goaltending if you want to win championships. And um, the goalie is the last line of defense, and our goaltending is going to have to make some saves every once in a while. And it might be they, we may not need them to make a big save till the final minute in the third, or we may them need them to stop a breakaway the first minute into the game. Like that's the goalie, and that's it's an honor or a privilege to play that position. Um, I think our, our decor, 
we feel like we definitely have have some good strong pieces there, some good returners, some good size, and then up front our forwards like we have some speed and creativity. Um, I think we're maybe gonna create and maybe have to manufacture some offense and things like that. But we we would love for for guys to step up, and there's obviously a ton of opportunity with us being a new staff, and we're trying to be uh, very open minded to the to the group that's here um, and the players that are coming in, and um, I think we're trying to grow off that excitement, but we want to be detailed and committed and, and play winning hockey at the end of the day. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, I guess the way I should say this is, you know, it's no, the team has not been great the past few years, but that does not mean that there's not good players on this team. Um, at times, you know, at one point last year, they had lost so many in a row, it just kind of unraveled and it's hard to kind of get back up and, and try, you know, I guess, finish out the season strong. Um, however, I think that this team has plenty of talented players and more brought in th- this year. And as you mentioned on the D-line, um, two returners, the the Krieger twins ended up coming back. For those of you who do not know, they're, they're coming back for another year at Michigan State. Um, added another uh, player from the transfer portal as well and, and some exciting young talent. So even though that there's a lot of turnover at some positions, I know that everyone's excited to watch this team this year. Um, and speaking about this team, right now, what are they doing? Like, what is the summer thing? Like, you know, we hear about Michigan State hockey starting in around August or September. And, of course, there's football piling on, so it's, you know, not as big of a story typically in terms of just, like, the newspapers and whatnot. And then it disappears in the summer. We don't hear about it at all. So can you kind of walk us through the summer schedule and – how it works up to the start of the season. Yep. So um, there's actually a handful of players that, that are here right now working out and training, taking classes. And then I believe July 5th, around that date, um, the whole team comes back there. The, the ice is in and Mun. Um, we're not allowed us, the coaching staff, we're not allowed to be on the ice or anything of that by NCAA rule. Um, the players are allowed to skate as a team, do skill sessions, on their own, the weight room, they're able to train with our strength coach in the weight room. So it's actually a really great opportunity for our guys to, to get together as a group, to start to build our culture, our, our identity, um, get the, the freshmen, they get a chance to take a class, they get to work with our, our strength and conditioning coach and our, our program here, and then they get to make 25 friends. So when they come back in early September, late August, they know where things are on campus. They're a little bit more yeah. situated. Um, this is something that has basically become par for the course for a lot of college hockey programs. We, we did the same thing at UMass. We had to um, instill it and fundraise. We're very lucky here at Michigan State that we already have all the, the funding and things like that set up for it. And um, everyone gets to be a part of it, which is huge. So it does give you a little bit of a leg up. I, I know for me, like I never got the opportunity to do as a player. And I wish I did for just to be around the stro- strength coach. To, um, to know where things were on campus because right now on campus it's, it's a little bit quieter and then when the students come back in the end of August September obviously it's a little bit busier so it's just a good opportunity for the guys to get, get acclimated um, but also during this time too um, our, our players are going to NHL development camps so we, we do allow them to leave and be a part of that um, and, and things like that so for us at Michigan State it's kind of the second term of the academic summer that's when we have our players in some schools do both terms. Some schools let them pick, um, but we feel like it's it's really valuable for our guys to go home to get away if they want yeah. to stay year round. They're more than welcome to to stay year round. But um, there, it is it is healthy for them to see their family, their friends. Um, as as nice and as pretty as my face might I might think mm-hmm. it is, I think there there is there's something to be said to, to get away a little bit. So there is a little bit more juice, a little bit more mojo when the whole group comes back together. Um. Do you know off? I, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here. I don't expect you to know all the all the all of them off the top of your head. But do you know any of the players who are in the developmental camps this summer? I mean, I believe most of our players that are NHL draft picks will be going to the development camps. Um, um, I don't know the free agent players. Um, actually, I do know that Tucker. I think Tucker had been invited to St. Louis. He's the only free agent one I know for sure, but I do believe there has been some other players free agent wise that have been invited to camps. I wish I knew that more off the top of my head. Yeah. I'm still- oh no, I, I don't expect you to just like filter through 25 head or names 
in your head when you just got here and no, I, 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 uh, I try to have things memorized and, uh, kind of like Alan from the hangover when he goes, yeah. and plays, uh, he goes to the casino and I think he plays blackjack or yeah. like that. I try to do the same thing in my head. And <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's important for our players that like the coach knows what they have going on and what they're doing. But r- right now I, um, I mean, I think I've only met three players so far in person. Um, even though I see their equipment in their stall and I know that they've been in the gym. So I, it's yeah. just I've all over the place. But when the guys all get back, like I do really look forward to meeting them all in person and getting to know them on a personal basis. Have you had a chance to, to watch much of, of the Michigan State games from last year at all? The um, That's something that I'm actually looking to tackle in kind of a more August. Okay. Um, that's something just um, – I can't speak for Coach Nightingale and Coach Towns, but um, previously August is maybe like a little bit slow over time, and that's more – me personally, that's when I kind of like to look at it and tackle it and get the, the, the brain juices flowing for the upcoming season yeah. um, and, and whatnot. But I think, again, too, I think it's valuable for our guys to, to have a clean, clean slate. Um, I don't want to have any preconceived notions on any of our players because um, we want to get the most out of them. And, and obviously we should have an idea of, of their strengths and weaknesses and things yeah. like that. But um, I don't want to dive in it too deep um, just because I think – um, I want them to kind of have a little bit of a clean slate, and that's maybe what I would want as a player and, and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 you know, I was probably – it sounded like I was about to set you up to just ask you a bunch of players or, or, or you know, really put you on the spot. But I was really just going to say that Jesse Tucker, like watching him play is just so special, uh, especially for a freshman who came in and just, um, you know, his, his vision in the offensive zone and just being able to find the open man even when they don't appear open at that time and – um, almost like passing them open. Um, I I know that you're re- really going to enjoy you know wa- watching his tape, but um, okay. Now we're going to get into a little bit more fun questions and less work questions. Um, do you know any of these current players? Everybody that I have on associated with the team, I always ask this. And hockey, I'm realizing, is so small. You just mentioned three countries that you all are, or mo- multiple countries actually that you all are traveling to. Um, however, everyone seems to like. I played against this guy, you know, in juniors, or oh yeah, I trained with him in the off season in some random state that neither one's associated with. There's always a connection. So I was wondering if you had any interesting connections or stories with any of the current players on the team. Yeah. So I mean, I think first and foremost, the the one I like to touch on is Jeremy Davidson. So we, uh, we actually recruited him my first summer at UMass um, when Jeremy was playing on the U16 team at Shattuck St. Mary. And um, I, I, I love Jeremy. I think he's a super talented player. And um, things didn't work out the way we wanted to at UMass. But I, I'm extremely excited to, to coach him here at Michigan State. Uh, I think he, following him from afar, it seemed like he had a very strong first season here. Yeah. And we'd like to um, – and I think he'd like to too. I think he wants to get even more out of his game, knowing him as a kid, as a person. Um, we had recruited him and Bobby Trevino kind of around the same time at UMass. And our nickname from, I mean, I think around here everybody calls him JD or Davey, but we, our nickname for him was Worm. So like the Worm emoji, I used to text him that a lot following his game. So I'm, I'm excited to be around Jeremy again. Worm. And I know he, he's excited. Um, I think he absolutely loves it here. He likes being closer to his home in Kalamazoo. So have a good personal relationship with him. Um, we mentioned him earlier, but Jesse Tucker, um, I, re- I had recruited him a little bit back in the day, had a relationship with him. And then uh, Tanner Kelly, I actually coached at the USA National 15 camp when Tanner Tanner was a, a young buck being only 15, but uh, absolutely loved him. And uh, the prior staff, I think Joe Axeter was a huge appointment on it. He, he committed him here to, to Michigan State. So um, I'm excited to coach Tanner again. I think he's a high energy kid. He's tough to play against. Um, and I think he's got a lot, a lot of upside that we'd like to untap. Um, and I mean, there's a, there's a ton of other guys on the team. I mean, most of the guys I've seen play in person for years, the, the Krieger brothers, I would have loved to recruit them, but I, I think they were really focused on, on staying in the Midwest and going to a, yeah. a big 10 school. Um, but I've, I've seen their game for years and things like that. Um, so there's a large group of players like um, Michael Underwood was a, a kid that I had mm-hmm. conversations with that's um, going to be a, a grad transfer from uh, Clarkson and things like that. So, no, there's there, there's a strong group of players here. And um, like you said, the hockey world is, is very, very small. And I know Coach Nightingale has coached against some of the players from being in the USHL and with the NTDP 
And I know Coach Towns has seen a lot of these players all all, all throughout their their junior leagues and midget leagues and things like that. So, yeah. um, no, it's a, so far it seems like a really good group of kids, and they're they're eager to learn and they and they want to they want to win and they want to get better. I had Underwood on this show, I guess, right after he committed, and that guy's awesome. He's just a laid back, easy to talk to guy. I really liked him, but Tanner Kelly was one of those players that. It's kind of like the glue guy, or as I call him, you know, he he just makes shit happen. Like Tanner Kelly flies around the ice. He'll do anything. He'll lay a, there was one play last year where he checked a guy right near the boards, went straight to the front of the uh, goal, redirected right, right off his stick into the goal. And it was like, you know, that's the untapped potential he has on offense. Um, you know, it's tough after just one year in, in college and adjusting, but, I think there's a lot of untapped potential with him, and he's going to be one of those players that I know fans are really going to enjoy watching going forward. Totally, totally. Um, okay, now now we're, this is just rapid fire. A few questions for you, and we'll we'll get you out of here. We're right at about 30 minutes, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. So uh, favorite movie or show? Um, favorite movie is definitely Happy Gilmore. Um, oh, yeah. It, it blends together my, my prior life of playing hockey and now my current life of pretending to be a golfer every once in a while. Um, and then kind of a, f- a funny story, too, on just popular, I guess a popular hockey movie. But uh, my parents' first date was to go see Slapshot. And uh, mm-hmm. ironically, their, their son ended up playing hockey. Now he's a hockey coach. So I don't know if something happened when they went to go see that movie. <laughs> um, favorite show? Like, this is an old show and it's not on anymore, but like, I loved Entourage when that was on TV. Oh, yeah. Um, so, but r- right now, my, my beautiful, lovely wife, Kara, um, I'm not ashamed to say this. She's got me into watching some HGTV and some Bravo. I'm a little bit of a Bravoholic, whether it's uh, Southern Charm or Summer House. Um, she's got me watching some of those things. We, we were into the Outer Banks on Netflix. Yeah things like that but have you seen a hometown on hgtv yeah yeah ben and aaron uh, not a bad show chip Chip and joanna flip or flop like yeah they're all the exact same they just have a different name really it's like here's here's another 30 minute show of what we just showed you but there's just going to be some some slight change to it but But yeah those shows are kind of addicting for some i don't know why but i'm the same way like I'll turn that on HGTV and it's three hours later and I've oh. learned nothing besides that. I need to do some stuff to my house apparently. But before meeting my wife, like I was strictly uh, a movie guy, ESPN and whatever, HBO, TNT, TBS. Mm-hmm. And then I met my wife and she's like, Hey, like this HGTV stuff. And I'm like, no, like home gardening network television, like this thing's brutal. And then she puts on the shows. I'm like, Oh, this is like actually kind of interesting. Like, yeah. Um, same thing with, with Bravo. I know whatever, that's kind of like pop culture stuff, but even like the food network, we don't watch it as much. Um, but in, in college we watch that a decent amount. Um, and I, I try, I can't watch the food network as much as I, I used to. Cause if I watch it, I start eating and I pack on some LBs to the barrel. Yeah. So I try to avoid that now. Yeah. Well, speaking of that favorite food. So fa- favorite food is, is my mom's fettuccine Alfredo. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit of a mama's boy but uh we we gr- growing up we ate a lot of italian and my mom's fettuccine alfredo um definitely is my number one choice so when uh i knew my I knew my i think my wife knew she was around to stay when my mom gave her her, her recipe and things like that so i still i request that on my birthday and maybe father's day and stuff like that but that's that's my favorite food but i actually i'll eat just about en- anything um but fettuccine alfredo is the number one so, so you you've you've mentioned your family a few times. Um, they're about to move to Michigan, right? Is that right? And you yes. just got the house, and you're, you know, you're right there about to do it. Also, do you have any um, family vacations planned, or is that out of the books for year one here? Yeah, I, I think the I think the family vacation is going to be out of the books for year one. I think we might spend some time together um, for Fourth of July and things like that. That's kind of given a little bit of a family tradition. For my, my family, they have a place in Old Lyme, Connecticut, and some of my high school buddies, um, buddies, buddies uh, that I made friends with in the UMass, we all kind of get together. That that's probably as close as we're going to get to a vacation this summer. But the priority number one is is getting the family situated here in um, at Michigan State, and also getting everything prepared for this upcoming season. So, last food question before we move on: Have, have you had, 
had a chance to hit any of the local, um, you know, re restaurants or anything like that yet? Yeah. And do you so, have a favorite? Co Coach Nightingale's taken me um, all over the place so far. Um, Crunchies? I'm, have you been to Crunchies? Been, been to Crunchies, ha went to Crunchies, had the wings. Um, it was actually kind of funny. Um, I think it was like the, the first week that I was here. We went out to Crunchies and um, we got the wings, but they were like buffalo wings. And I do not have a very high spice tolerance. Oh, no. And the, the wings were pretty hot. And uh, if you ever seen the movie Dumb and Dumber, after about oh, yeah. four or five wings in, the wings were really hot. And Coach Nightingale and I were like spraying like – we were like, looked at each other. Like we wanted to spray like m mustard and ketchup into our <laughs> mouth with our mouths were on fire. Um, yeah. But no, like been there, went to a place called Dogwoods or Dagwoods. I believe the name Dagwoods. Right? Unreal but, spot. Um, so that, that, that's a little, and I know ev everyone listening to this knows Dagwoods, but being not from that area, when I went up there, someone told me to go there and I was like, Oh, it's going to be some nice restaurant it's kind of just a hole in the wall and you know you get a burger and a beer for like five bucks and yeah it, it's a good spot to 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 kind of hang out and watch a game oh, totally i i whatever my, my dad likes a burger every once in a while i would take him there in two seconds i i absolutely loved it um laws teca i'm probably butchering that yeah, yeah. Mexican place down. i've been there my, my wife loves mexican so when she was here last week i i took her there so she could see that um so yeah, I mean, whatever. We've kind of bounced around. There's some other places that, that I don't remember their name, but uh, Coach Nightingale, from him being a, a former player and obviously yeah. half year, I think he kind of knows the area inside and out. And every single night when we're leaving the office, I'm like, hey, we're, where's the place tonight? And he always looks back to me. He's like, oh, I, I got a place. I got something for us. Yeah, you know, the, there's a new taco place over kind of by the um, new hotel that I can't think of the name of, the, the Graduate Hotel. Yeah. Um, there's a new taco place. Starts with a B. I don't remember, but I went there when I came up for the GLI this past year and it was great. So if you need to take your wife somewhere, it's a little bit more of an upscale taco place, you know, smaller tacos, you get multiple things, but yeah, good spot. Okay. Enough about food because I'm already getting hungry, but two more questions for you. Your favorite ho hockey memory. Um, I mean, most recent hockey memory was, was definitely winning the national championship at UMass um, during that, that COVID year. Um, very, very challenging, jumping through all the different hoops, but just so proud of, of our players with everything that they had battled through. So w winning that national championship um, for, for Coach Carvel at UMass, but also for Coach Barr, who had, had kind of left two programs that had won national championships after he's left. It was just very satisfying to be able to do that. A as a player in college, definitely – um, making it to the frozen four that, that, that was really, really cool, um, for our team. But I mean, selfishly for me, um, my, my parents put it at so much time and in, into my playing career and sacrifices and helping me just try to get better as a, as a person and as a player, um, and to see them there, it was really cool. I mean, to play on Ford field was awesome. And then, and professionally, like, um, probably get my first American league win like that. That was really cool. And my parents yeah. were all there. It was in Providence. So obviously uh, the, the dream was to make it to the NHL and just fell a little bit short, but uh, to play in the American league, to win a game like in um, and things like that and, and see that I could play at those levels. And I didn't have the longevity in my pro career, which I would have liked, um, but that's just how, how it is sometimes. But um, no, I, I think I've been extremely blessed um, with the opportunities that hockey's given me. And I'm looking forward to making some memories here at Munn and uh, with, with Michigan state. Speaking of, your first win. Do you what do you remember about that game? And also, who was the best player that you stopped their shot? Um, so that game, I just remember giving up like a breakaway fairly early in the first, being like, uh, like I'm gonna <laughs> out pretty fast. Um, but I was on Hershey, which had a very, very strong team and got some pretty good run support consistently. So um, but I just remember too that game in Providence they had a really good crowd. Like I wasn't exactly expecting that. So there's a real strong crowd there, which kind of made for a good atmosphere. Um, and then what was the, what was the second half of your Who was the best player that you stopped their shot? So my first year of pro, I was at the Washington Capitals training camp and I actually got called up for some practices during the year. So I, I had Ovechkin shooting on me, um, Alexander Semin, John Carlson, yeah. Green, so those guys were shooting on me. And then my second year of pro, I was at the Boston Bruins training camp, um, was on the ice with Patrice Bergeron, yeah. um, Marshawn. 
Sagan was still there. Um, Krejci, Lucic. So Chara uh, too, probably. Chara, Chara was there. Absolute missile of a shot. So <laughs> I'm not going to say I stopped them every single time, but you asked <laughs> when I stopped, and I did actually stop shots from all those guys. Wow. Well, <laughs> hey, that's awesome. All right, last question before we get you out of here. Favorite sports teams, or, or do, do you watch other sports besides hockey? And if so, who, who are your teams? So my number one all-time team is the Hartford Whalers. That's how I got into hockey. So um, the, the green here in Munn is very nostalgic to the Hartford yeah. Whalers. Green. So they're, they're my number one team. You probably see that on my Twitter uh, profile. But um, that, that is genuine. Like I, I, my family and I, we love the Hartford Whalers. Used to go to all the games. I still follow a lot of the players in their – success as coaches um in management as scouts and then a lot of their sons are actually in the nhl now too which is kind of crazy so that's my number one team probably the uh the yankees are maybe number two oh. uh, my dad's a huge yankees fan in kind of connecticut you're kind of in like the bermuda triangle of, of who you root for yeah so the yankees were, were probably um number two i'm like i wasn't a huge like football or like um nfl guy or anything like that so but probably the yankees are number two um, and then basketball, I guess I'd say the Celtics, but I'm not a really a huge basketball guy. I did like Michael Jordan back in the day. That's partially why I named my son Jordan. So, well, yeah, so I, I'm a big Celtics fan. They play tonight, you know, in the finals. So I'll, I'll be watching that. But, um, growing up, I was lucky enough when I was really young. So, I'm 28, I'm about to turn 29. So, I caught the tail end of Michael Jordan's career. I was five or six years old when he was kind of the last stint with the Bulls, and I just remember like my cousin being like, you have to watch this guy. Like you have to, he's much older than me, my cousin. And I'm so glad that he did. Cause I got to say that I watched Michael Jordan. Now I watched him with the Washington wizards, but you know, that wasn't the same Jordan, but um, Hey, thank you so much for, for your time today, coach. And um, all, all the information that was great. And of course, nothing but, but best of luck to you and the team. Um, we will be watching every single weekend, win or lose, and supporting you all. And we are really excited to have you in the in the new coaching staff here, here um, le- leading the the Michigan State Spartans. No, like like I said earlier, we're we're, we're eager and ex- excited, and um, obviously we know it's going to be a process, and it's going to take a little bit of time. And, and seeing it at at UMass and St. Lawrence and Nazareth, and um, obviously Coach Towns has some great experiences at AIC and Clarkson, and Coach Nightingale from working in in the nhl and here in college and with the ntdp um so obviously i think we're excited from our our backgrounds and what we can do but i think we we're excited with the group here and it's going to be a challenge but um that's what that's why you you come to a place like michigan state to to be a part of something special and we're hoping we can do this uh sooner rather than later but we know that uh it's not going to happen overnight but we're we're really like i said earlier we we want to attack this challenge and and go after it uh head on and it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you so much and go green.